a lot of people think that the God of miracles was in generations before us mm -hmm. and not now. You believe God is still God of miracles? Yes, yes. He is, and I've seen many here just yeah. within our church, but yeah. also during the time I was going through my cancer treatments, I saw miracles. Yeah. Even among the people I was around in the setting of the chemo. How important it, was it to you to be connected to a spirit-filled church? It was, it was my lifeline. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with y'all today, I've thought a lot about Sister Mary. I look back and she was my encouragement. Well, that's why I didn't want to lose. No, I didn't either. I just knew God was going to heal her, but sometimes we don't always get what we want. But, and there's reasons for everything. We don't know what they are. Well. And I'm with you, Pastor. I hate cancer. I, hate it. I lost my brother to brain <laughs> cancer July 4th of 2011. I've lost one uncle to cancer. And yes, I, I hate cancer. I, I lost my grandmother my mom's mom to cancer when I was in sixth grade. She died of ovarian cancer. Yeah. Um, my mom's had breast cancer. Of course, they caught it really early. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I knew my parents couldn't take another child. They only had two children and then about killed them when my brother died. Yeah. The thing that I experienced when I found out I had cancer, and this is gonna sound really odd, was I had peace because I knew God yeah. was going to take care of me. Yeah. I had that assurance from His Word. I knew that He was going to take care of me, and I think Randy had already felt that the night that they told him, called from the operating room, and said, it's not good, it's advanced ovarian cancer. I mean, they knew as soon as they saw it. Yeah. and. He buckled, but he said it, he felt like God just lifted him up and gave him a peace yeah. and said, it's going to be okay. I got her. Yeah. And so, and when I woke up and the first thing I asked them was, I want you to tell me what, what it is. Right. And so they told me, but I never, I always had a peace about it because it felt like that he yeah. was there with me through all of it when they first when I first sat down with the surgeons and talked to them, I found out later from my OBGYN that he didn't even want to take my case. From the test results that they had gotten and from different scans they had done, he thought there was no purpose in him being involved in the surgery. He was an oncologist. And so he didn't even want to take my case. Well, she just begged him to just please take my case. And so um, he did. He, you know, finally decided to. Well, he just pretty much told me he thought it was um, advanced um, endometriosis. Oh, okay. He thought from the results it was advanced endometriosis. Okay. But later, a year later, I went to see my OBGYN. Well, she happened to be studying under him at the time, and so she was in the room when they did the surgery. Okay. And she said when they first opened me up that they both just looked at each other and could not believe right. what they saw. Yeah. Because none of the scans, none of the ultrasounds, none of the test results had shown them that I had this advanced ovarian cancer. Right. It had grown into my large intestine. Right. They had to take out 12 inches of my large intestine. And they also had to install an ileostomy because the large intestine, when they put it back together, it was so thin, they had to let it heal. So I had the ileostomy, they took out my appendix, appendix, they took out my appendix. They took out my appendix, um, they took out several of my lymph nodes. 
and of course both of my ovaries and then before I left the hospital they came back and said it was low grade ovarian cancer okay. before I left the hospital eight days later okay. so and then it began my journey of taking the chemo and going through that losing my hair yeah I remember yeah. and then for for three years you've been in the midst of this and then during that time sister Annette your husband Randy mm -hmm. um, he he went through a traumatic surgery as well he did um, I had my mine October 1st 2015 his was um, two days before Thanksgiving of that same year uh, he had brain surgery they actually went into the brain stem and had to separate a blood vessel off of a nerve and he was in pain constantly and it has a long name to it it's called glossopharyngeal neuralgia um, it's very painful it's every time your heart beats basically you feel pain from right. that nerve because yeah. the blood vessels on it well i remember that day uh you were there mm -hmm. uh you, was. you were supposed to be somewhere taking some chemo wasn't mm -hmm. you but you meant you was going to be there i was because i had promised him yeah. because i had been trying to get him to have the surgery for two years and yeah. i told him i said i'm going to be there and so we were in the process of finding him a doctor that could do his surgery when all this came up with me and my surgery occurred which was an eight-hour surgery well so, um and what was so amazing through all this um i mean the, the, we we prayed and we sought god and we we called out all the scriptures of healing, and yes. you and Randy were have been so faithful. You're a camera minister, and Randy is the one that's in charge of our switching, going from camera to camera, and uh, uh, y'all y'all obtain your faithfulness to God, um, and uh, God has proven Himself. He has. And I know the enemy will, like we talked about earlier, how the enemy will come against you, even you sitting down. Uh, giving your testimony today, he'll come against you and try to tell you that, you know, because you're giving God the glory for this openly and in front of thousands of people, um, then he's going to attack you again. Mm -hmm. But we know he's a liar, mm -hmm. and uh, we know this is going to encourage uh, other ladies that are watching, other men that are watching that's battling cancer and going through cancer. Uh, I, one thing that I remember even up to this day, uh, even to where we are now, it, God just kept giving us miracle after miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, we would pray, we would seek God. Uh, I, would, I would watch you go through weak times. Mm -hmm. I think one of the times that broke Pastor's heart the most doing this was uh, uh, when you lost your hair and uh, you got a beautiful head of hair today. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you... When you lost your hair, it just, um, that was a sign to me that, um, that the, the medication was taking its toll. And I would watch you come in weak and I'd watch you, but you'd still come. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just didn't quit. And uh, I'd watch you praise your way through certain things, uh, discouragements that mm -hmm would come and sometimes, you know, uh, doctors, they don't operate in faith. Mm -hmm. They operate just by mind knowledge. And we thank God for doctors and we thank God for medication, but we know ultimate healing only comes from the Lord. Yes. And um, uh, and we, we, we give God the praise for that. What was the moment that you went, we made it? You know, what was that moment? That was when I got the test results that the CA125 had went under 35, which was a normal reading. Right. And it was exciting. It was a happy time, mm -hmm. but it was more of a confirmation because I knew the whole time and felt so close to God during that time that I knew I was gonna be healed. I just felt it. I just, I knew he had me. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible verse, by his stripes we are healed. Yes. During that time of my cancer treatments, that verse became so real to me in ways I, you know, of course, read it hundreds of times over my lifetime. 
but it just became so real during that time. And so then when they finally said, you know, you're under the average of the 35, you're under that, you're good. I was excited and happy, you know, that that proof was there, mm -hmm. but it's it's almost like I already knew it. It's like you didn't need that. Yes, you yes, didn't need that yes, you, exactly, that yes, yes, well, because I knew he had. Yeah. You know, the scripture says that he watches over us in our bed of languishing. Mm -hmm. So you remember, if you see a number go up, or if you see something be elevated, I just felt the Spirit of God nudge me to tell you that He's still watching. Oh, yeah. He's still watching. He don't slumber. He don't mm -hmm. sleep. He don't take a break. He He's don't quit. There. He don't quit. I can remember the one time during the whole process of my cancer, my chemo and everything, that I got really upset. I had went, I think it was on a Wednesday for my, a round of chemo, and I had come home that evening and I was feeling really good, and I wanted to go to church that night. And my mom didn't want me to go. She said she wouldn't take me because she didn't understand how much it meant to me and my ability to go through this that it was that I had to be in church. I got quite angry that night. Probably said some things I shouldn't have. <laughs> but, um,. She understood after that, and she she and I just told her the next day. I said, "Look, you know, Mom, God's got me." I said, "Don't worry about me going to church. Nobody's gonna come close to me because they know what I'm going through." I said, "And even if they do, I said it's not going to. I'm not gonna be harmed. I'm good." Um, the doctors didn't want me to go to the hospital when Randy had his brain surgery. They didn't. He had back surgery in May of 2016. I went to the hospital with him then, stayed with him. They didn't want me to go, but God protected me and I knew that he would. I just, I had that assurance and it just, it, I felt like, I remember before I left the hospital the first time you came, you and your lady, Sister Debbie, and as you were walking out the door, you just, kind of turned and stepped back and said, you need to do that chemo. And I was like, yes, sir. Because I knew God had already spoken it to me. And then he spoke it to you to tell me, to reassure me that it was going to be okay. And the first time I took chemo, I got really, really sick. I got every um, bad side effect that they ever told me I'd have. The shakes, the fever, the throwing up, anything that I could have, I had it. It was the whole list. Even though I got weak during my chemo and I lost my hair, those symptoms never, every round of chemo I had never came back to me. It was wow. just that one time. And Randy told me later, a week or so later, that he felt like God told me that I was healed. Yeah. But I continued to go to chemo and the numbers kept getting better. But I met people in chemo that I would sit next to, whether it be in the waiting room or in there, and I just, I didn't really share my story with them much. I just sat and listened to them. Yeah. And it seemed to help them, help them feel better. Yeah. And I just listened. Yeah. Well, that's... And I think, I, I look, looking back, you know, I feel like God sent me there, as, particularly for one couple. Um, I actually met them in one of the classes before chemo. And before my second round of chemo. And she, I happened to sit beside her in chemo one day, like a couple months into her chemo and my second round of chemo. And she told me that when we were in that class together and I spoke to them about losing my hair, about how it was kind of liberating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, still, I, still, I would tease my husband. I'd say, you know, I know what it feels like to be a man now. I can yeah. get in the shower and jump out and put my clothes on yeah. and run. <laughs> yeah. no, so anyway, so it wasn't I've, as, as much as I, I was always the person that liked my hair to be just so and, you know, every hair in place and everything. And it didn't mean that much. 
it just once it was gone, it it, it yeah. wasn't yeah. it wasn't anything. Right. It was just God. It was I don't know. It, you it was, was alive. I was. You was alive. Yeah. It, it, and it just the hair didn't mean much to me it was yeah. just and it still it does but it doesn't right. um it's gonna sound funny but i've kind of had problems cutting it because i feel like god gave it to me i don't want to take it away yeah. so. <laughs> but saying. anyway That's but cool. um but yes my the biggest thing through all of this is is that god carried me through this yes. Yes. i never felt like he left me i never felt like he abandoned me yeah. He was always there. He always carried me through. Well, that's one thing that, you know, I continue, continually tell our praise and worship ministers and uh, my staff and everybody. Uh, every, that's one reason we have church like we have church is because, you know, we don't know who's coming through the door. We don't know you know, like this past Sunday, my goodness, we, there's no way we could know who came through the door and no. what they were carrying and mm -hmm. what they were having. And uh, on, on any given service, the Spirit of God has to move in a multitude of directions. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have to follow that or Him uh, because uh, for some people it really is life and death. Mm -hmm. You know, not just in the sin state, Mm -hmm. But in the physical state, the physical. it's 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 life life and death. So, so what would you what would you tell somebody? What would you say to them if they found out that they have cancer, or maybe there's somebody that's going through it now? And and what could you say to them? I would say to them, and this is going to sound odd, but you have to listen to the doctors but don't listen to the doctors. They can advise you, but you ultimately have to be the one that makes the decisions for yourself with guidance from God. Stay in the Word. Stay in prayer. Stay around people that encourage you, like a church family. Um, prayer warriors, that was very important to me. Um, but the main thing is keep your eyes on God and never take them off of God. I think that's a good life lesson. And uh, if, if, if there's anybody out there um, and, and maybe, maybe you're looking for an answer for whatever it is you may be going through, as Sister Annette has said, there's, there's not but one answer and that's God. Um, we thank the Lord for hospitals and medication and doctors, but they can only do so much. But we serve a God that's so much in the miracle working business that He can come right to where you are and touch you in a way that only He can and strengthen you. Um, thank you. You're welcome. I love you. And uh, I'm excited about what God's yet to do in your life and Randy's life. And uh, can't wait to see it all come to fruition. Amen. God's going to do great things. Yes, it is.